Hey everyone, my name is Nathan. I'm going to go over a sample video project for the 2021 Cedar Valley Maker Fest Youth Competition. This video is only an example and by no means perfect, but it should give you a good jumping off point and give you some ideas of what you might want to include in your video. I'm going to signpost important content with a little sign that will appear up here in the video and make sure to follow those to see what else you need to include. If you want more information on how to make an even better video, be sure to check out the judging rubric and make sure you understand the expectations for the competition. And that should put you in a good position. For more information about the competition itself, make sure you look at the youth information packet and read the whole thing. It has a lot of important information that you might be interested in. All right, grab some popcorn. You have five minutes to eat it while this video plays. Enjoy. Hi, my name is Nathan Hoffman. I'm the program coordinator for the Cedar Valley Makerspace, and this is my sample project video for the 2021 Cedar Valley Makerfest. I'm submitting this project to compete in the STEM category. For my project, I made something I've always been interested in from YouTube and other makers I've seen, and that's a trebuchet. The trebuchet is an ancient siege engine first used by the Chinese over a thousand years ago. It slings objects, or in my case, tennis balls, a great distance. Even with its incredible age, there are still people building these machines, and even improving them today. The design I built was done by Instructables user Mr. Stapleton, and is the most efficient trebuchet design yet. A trebuchet has three main parts. A counterweight, which takes advantage of gravity, a lever arm, which swings on some kind of frame, and a sling that holds and releases a projectile at the end of a rope or a cord. When launched, the weight on one end of the arm causes the other end to move at a higher velocity based on the position of the fulcrum or where the lever arm connects to the frame. The sling rotates around the point that's tied to the lever arm until it reaches an angle determined by a finger on the end of the lever and is released. And now it's time for a build montage. Here's a great image of the general design for Mr. Stapleton's Constructible but you may notice that my final product looks a bit different. Because the competition theme is reuse, I chose to build this trebuchet exclusively from scrap materials from the makerspace. The main arm of the trebuchet is made from some half inch plywood that looks like it had a former life as a table saw jig. After removing the screws left over from its last use, I took it to the saw and cut it down to size. Following the measurements from the instructable, I made the arm in a pretty short amount of time. And here you can see the drilling of the center hole for the swing arm. Next up was the triangle, or the stand that works as the base of the trebuchet on one end, and the fulcrum of the lever arm on the other. This was made from some scrap pine I found in the wood scrap pile, and cut into one inch by one inch square dowels. Now as you can see here, I cut off the ends of two of these pieces at 15 degree angles, and found the centers to drill and mount the axle that the lever arm rests on. Uh, this was a challenging bit and it took a little trial and error, but eventually I figured out how to clamp it, keep it level, and find the center. Here's a picture of the glue setup. I just used a spare piece of pine to spread the edges of the triangle apart just enough so there would be space for when I put the swing arm in. I chose the axle and all the other hardware from the miscellaneous hardware bins uh, in the makerspace, and it took a little digging, but I eventually found it, found everything I needed. Here's all the work on the axle, getting it to length and all that. Next up, I attached the axle and hooked everything together, and at this point, things started to go pretty quickly. And here's the making of the pouch according to the instructable I was following. And then the whole thing gets tied up onto the arm, a little finger in the top to hold on to it, as you can see here. And here's the whole thing standing up without weight. Weight was a big issue for this project. I wound up going with some of this plate steel because I wanted to use used parts. Uh, I found this in the weld shop and it took a long time to cut through as you could probably see by that video. Um, but once I did and I drilled some holes in it, uh, I went to attaching it to the arm and 
uh, even though it was some old ugly pieces of metal, I thought it looked pretty sharp. And that brings us to the first test, which should be, oh no, it's broken. Uh, all right, so we need to make everything a little stronger. So how about some metal brackets? These made everything much stronger and I'm really happy with how they turned out as well. I think they look pretty sharp. All right, take two. Hey, look at that, perfect. And in reality, it took me many more than two tries to get this to work properly. But uh, once it did, it was great. As I hope you can see, this project was a lot of fun and I learned a great deal about basic physics concepts and some new construction methods. The setback from my first failed attempt taught me a bit about glue joints as well, namely, don't use only glue on load-bearing joints. Ultimately, I achieved my goal of building a working trebuchet and the machine throws tennis balls about 150 feet. Thanks for watching! Hey folks, just wanted to say, if you are watching this video and thinking that you couldn't possibly do any of this, uh, keep in mind that you don't have to do exactly what I did. I had access to tools at the Cedar Valley Makerspace, which made the project a lot easier to make. Uh, you could potentially also get access to the tools for free by emailing info at cedarvalleymakers.org with your questions, but you know, if you have hand tools at home or you don't even want to make a project with tools, that's perfectly fine. You Ultimately, you will choose the project you think you can make and document it. Uh, if you want help or advice, you can still email info at cedarvalleymakers.org.